All right, you've seen a bunch of mock drafts online. Daniel Jeremiah's got three of them. Bucky Brooks got four of them. Charles Davis put out his. This is my first one, and I have been compiling all the information I can for the last several weeks to kind of make the best yep. informed mock draft possible. And I'm really quickly, this isn't what I would do. This isn't me. I'm not a scout. I don't watch film. I don't tell you what I would do if I were. Here's some information around the league on how things are trending, and I can go through all of it with you. Let's get into Come the on, mock Peter. draft. Come on, Peter. Come on, baby. 1.0. Picks one through eight. Let's go. Let's dig in. Let's see the slides. Number one, I've got the Jacksonville Jaguars taking Aiden Hutchinson. Okay, smart move. But number two, there's your shocker, folks. Kayvon Thibodeau, number two overall to the Detroit Lions, despite all of the concerns and red flags about what he's saying in interviews. <laughs> still goes number two. Jets fans, you're getting saucy. Number four, they go corner the best Defensive back in this draft and a no-brainer. Giants fans, excited at five and seven. You get maybe the best offensive tackle and you get maybe the best pass rusher who's been rumored to go number one overall, Trayvon Walker. Kenny Pickett goes six. Let's see the next eight picks. If we go to number nine, Seahawks go Chuck. Jets fans, number 10. This is the shocker of all shockers. Jamison Williams, who you're not hearing a ton about, who tore his ACL and might not be ready to play in 2022 going 10th overall to the Jets. Kyle Hamilton, Stingley, Lloyd, Ravens go Penny. Eagles fans, what are we doing? What are we doing? How about Drake London? Yes, another wide receiver after taking Devontae Smith and Jalen Rager in consecutive years. <laughs> Drake London. Saints, Garrett Wilson. Chargers, Chris Olave. Firepower. And then you get the big combine superstar, okay. Jordan Davis to the Saints at 19. How about number 20, Malik Willis to the Steelers? Zion Johnson. Big offensive guard and center out of BC goes there. Packers fans, Traylon Burks goes 22 okay. to the Packers. Rodgers gets a weapon. Cowboys fans, offensive line? Yes. yes. A sophomore, <laughs> Tyler Smith out of Tulsa. Let's keep going here. Packers fans, again, what are we doing? Devontae Wyatt, Bills, Quay Walker, another. Look at all that UGA, 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 UGA. That's how it goes. And then 30 and 32, we've got quarterback. Yep. Seahawks trading back into the first round. The Rams pick goes to the Lions. They go Desmond Ritter. A lot to digest. It's all on NFL.com, but there you have it. My first mock draft for 2022. This is from information from folks around the league. This is not from what I would do if I were. Jane Slater, what do you got? All right. Uh, so I'm looking at your list here, and I want to take a look at your top five picks. Yep. Some obvious name here, but I think I'm most surprised by Kayvon Thibodeau, although I... I would sort of joke this week that we should take a shot every time we've said his name because we've been high on him. I love his energy. I love his confidence. And I'm a little excited about the idea of him and Dan Campbell together. You know, both kind of speaking that confident language. Uh, but why are you so high on him right there at two and going to the Lions? Thibodeau's not for every team, okay? Thibodeau is one of these guys where on tape it's all there, but had a lot of red flags in the combine process for guys who evaluate down. Things he said. He said that he wanted to go to Alabama, uh, Oregon over Alabama because of the brand of Nike, which that rubs people wrong. He said, uh, the, the, the most ridiculous thing I've heard in this draft process is that I'm not the top prospect. Very brash, very bold. Um, Chris Spielman, Dan Campbell, uh, Aaron Glenn, you're talking about NFL like NFL guy. They're not scared of that. They embrace that. Let's go. Bring the confidence because if any team needs it, it might be the Lions. I don't know if the Jets need that in their locker room. I don't know if the Texans want that to rebuild their stuff. The Lions, he is a purebred, and I think they might be the most specific team for Kayvon Thibodeau. If he doesn't go there, he might slip. He's got uh, 90s energy for me, you know? Sure like that Deion Sanders yes. energy. Uh, the, for everyone like you know, I love it. We don't really have those guys anymore because, to your point, it's almost like you get knocked for being honest or confident about yourself. But we don't want a meek mm -hmm. player either. We hate when a player, when we ask a player, do you think you're the best? Well, I think I'm good. Well, then a fan base loses their mind over that. Yep. No, we want the guy that. I mean, again, I, I love – what was it? Somebody said we should ban me from talking Cowboys. No. Micah Parsons, when he first came into Dallas, I was like, this kid's a little a little over the top. Mm -hmm. You know, he thinks he's the best, but he was. Mm -hmm. Yeah, he was right. Right? So Thibodeau thinks he's even better than that. So. I love that. <laughs> Detroit Lions, I think they're getting a dog, and then they get a quarterback at 32 in Desmond Ritter, who is one of the greatest winning quarterbacks. In, I think that would be a home run draft. Thibodeau and Ritter, sounds good for me for love the Lions. It. Peter, if I might, uh, give me my camera. Uh, let me Here speak. we go. <laughs> <laughs> 
this is the mock you want. <laughs> this is the one. Let me explain why. There are many mocks. We all respect them. Most mock drafts are based on film heads watching and studying these players and saying what the teams should do. It becomes about them. <laughs> Peter's is his take on what they will do. It has nothing to do with Peter and everything to do with the teams and his relationship and insight to them. This is the closest you're going to get to an answer key rather than a vanity project. <laughs> Thank you, Kyle. Look at Peter's mock, especially you guys and you ladies in New York. The New York Jets are here. The New York Giants are here. They need to both draft really well because they're not good, Peter. You have relationships with these teams. You have insight into these teams. And let's get into it. You got the Jets going with the sauce at four, taking a corner in the fourth overall pick, and then going wide receiver with Jamison Williams at 10. So a corner and a wide out in the top 10 for Big Blue, also down there in Jersey. You got Icky E at the fifth pick, a big offensive tackle. And then Trayvon Walker, defensive end, two picks later at seven. So, Peter, that is four picks for two teams in one market. Tell us why you have them on your mock, the best in the business. Start with the Jets. They can't miss on that four pick. They can't mm -hmm. take a guy like Trayvon Walker whose film doesn't necessarily – from everything I'm hearing, the Jets want the surest prospect on the board. And maybe it is Walker when this whole process is done. But Sauce Gardner is the – they need every position, the Jets. Literally every position. Sauce Gardner is the – is the biggest no-brainer out of yeah. all of them. This is this is Rebus Island all over again. Like that's how highly teams are talking about this guy. I think they scoop him up. They say, okay, fine. We've got our lockdown corner for the next 10 years. He's great on the field, great off the field. We've got him. Then 10, this is where you're taking that big swing. We've heard about DK Metcalf rumors. We know that Tyreek Hill was pursued. They want a wide receiver. Jamison Williams is being mocked in the late 20s by everybody else. I assure you, folks at home, this guy will not escape the top 15. He has an ACL injury. ACL injuries aren't what they were in the 1990s anymore. He was the number one wide receiver throughout his collegiate career, and he played at Alabama in a, in, a, in a loaded wide receiver room and then hurt himself in the college football playoffs. The Jets, they're not firing Joe Douglas or Robert Sala after one year. This is like a long-term yeah. investment, and I think he's a long-term investment. I'm going with receiver for the Jets, and it's Jamison Williams, mm -hmm. not Drake London and not mm -hmm. some of the other guys. Mm -hmm. Yeah, this draft has a deep, core of receivers going yes. in. You have six going in the first round. I didn't see my guy that I would like at the top of the list, but nonetheless, you have six guys going yeah. in. Identify in who your guy yeah, is. Who's your guy? We'll talk about that in Dante. Okay. Oh. Hey, Dante, no, no. if he's not at the top of the list, he ain't going there. Sorry. <laughs> Sorry to break his <laughs> But here are the wide receivers you have going in the first round. Tell me, how did you come up with both this group of guys and where they are going? This could all mix and match based on how it's going, but I think this is the this is the group. This is the group, and maybe you get Sky Moore or Christian Watson to come on in, but those six are viewed as first-round grades. The Penn State kid might fall out of the first round, but you're going to see five wide receivers taken in the top 25. I believe your man is Burks out of Arkansas. We man. love him on this show, too. He'll go in the top 25, but the two Ohio State kids, and then I'm going Jamison Williams to the Jets at 10, but it just as likely the, the, the Atlanta Falcons could say, we love Garrett Wilson at eight. Like, they could go a lot of ways, and I mentioned it this week. Each team has a little bit of difference on their board that I've spoken to, but Jamison Williams is coming up a lot higher than we're seeing necessarily in the mock drafts that you're reading online. Um, Peter, some things never change. You, you love the quarterbacks, and you know that they go in the draft, even when you hear this is not a good quarterback <laughs> draft, and you hear it almost every year. Here we are. You have four quarterbacks going in the first 32 picks. Let's take a look at that group right now. Here's Peter's mock draft. He's got Pickett going. Peter, you take it over. What do you got here? I don't think it's a good quarterback draft. Okay. I don't. It doesn't matter. That's, they, might, they still might go. Exactly. Right. I don't think it's a good I think all five of the first round picks from last year would have gone before Kenny Pickett and Malik Willis. Like, that's how depleted this quarterback group is. And yet teams get antsy and teams realize that if you draft a quarterback in the first round, you get the fifth-year option, meaning you can have them for five years at a value that is far better. It's why Lamar Jackson was taken 32nd and not 33rd. It's why Teddy Bridgewater was taken 32nd and not 33rd. Those are the four I got. The, the, the interesting one is Corral to the Seahawks, which people are like, well, why would they come back? Here's the connection there. He's a Long Beach Poly kid, which was what USC's territory was, and his college coach was Lane Kiffin. Hmm. If Pete Carroll knows anything, it's Long Beach Poly from his days at USC and Lane Kiffin, who was with him on staff at USC for years. I could imagine Lane making the pitch to him, saying, hey, take Matt at nine, take Matt at nine. It's a little too rich at nine. And maybe I'm wrong. Maybe he does go in the top 15. I, I know a lot of teams do like him a lot. But I thought Seattle was a good fit. And with Kansas City having two picks, I could see Seattle coming back and getting them. But again, mock draft, 
We're going to change this thing one more time before the draft. Mm -hmm. And I'm not being cocky or cocksure when I say this. I feel pretty good about my information. And if it's wrong, we'll tear it up. We'll do it again. Remember, I'm the guy who said Mac Jones is going to the Niners no matter what at number three. <laughs> I was wrong. <laughs> I kind of